Shalom from Jerusalem. This is another program of uh, TV7's Middle East Review. And with me, as usual, friend and colleague, Colonel Reserve Dr. Eran Lerman, who has a few words to say from a personal perspective. Well, I, I think I owe it to the viewers to explain why I was not bearded uh, last month, and I will not be bearded next month, but I'm wearing uh, what is in our tradition a mourner's beard. My mother passed away on the 27th of February. Um, I, uh, I thought uh, it, it is a, a certain um, circle uh, in life, but uh, she was the wireless operator who uh, received the Declaration of Independence in Morse. She was a wireless operator here in Jerusalem under wow. siege, wow. and it was broadcast from Tel Aviv, uh, the, 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 the text that Ben-Gurion uh, finally agreed this to. Day, uh, Friday, the 14th of May, 1948. 48. Uh, I once was in an American um, uh, site of one of the first battles of the War of Independence with my parents, and I looked at the warden there, and I, s I gave him a wink and said, you still have people coming who fought in the War of Independence? Now, he, he had a look, he figured that I'm not uh, uh, you know, ignorant of certain <laughs> difficulties for people uh, from the 18th century. And then he said, uh, how do you mean? I said, my folks did. And uh, where? In Israel. He lit up and he said, I was a younger, uh, on the first, young man on the first American merchant marine ship to sail into Haifa under the Israeli oh, flag. That's amazing. And I asked my mother uh, once or twice, you know, were you elated to get this in the declaration? And she said, we didn't know if we would survive two weeks. Wow. There was an sure. invasion of all Arab sure. armies. Sure. Her friends died in the, uh, when the Gush Etzion fell to the invading Jordanians. Uh, uh, there was no sense of elation. And despite all our troubles, and I suppose we will be discussing a, a, a significant list of troubles uh, this month, look at where we are now, hmm. nearly at nearly 10 million people, uh, nearly 7 million Jewish people in this land or more, uh, increasing, uh, an increasingly uh, robust economy that was not undone even by a long and, and punishing war mm -hmm. um, and, and other aspects that we can be proud of even amidst a very uh, difficult uh, period. So uh, that was uh, to some extent my consolation. She passed away sure, at 96. Sure. She had a full life and she saw, she was here at the creation and, and so quite a lot happening since. So I, I felt obliged to. Well, I'm sure that, that all our viewers will join me in extending condolences. I'm Thank you. really sorry for your loss, but uh, you can be very proud of your mother's legacy, of your parents' uh, legacy. And uh, as to where we are today, I would just say one thing. Um, God's prophecy lives on. The word of God lives. And this is where we are. And that reminds me, you know, if we just continue on this one personal uh, thing. Um, you know that when the, uh, after Ben-Gurion uh, in 1948 declared the independence, the first country that recognized Israel was the United States, de facto. And uh, when I was in Washington, I uh, had the privilege to visit um, the presidential library of Harry S. Truman. In Independence, in, in Inde Missouri. Independence, yes. Missouri. And they gave me, you know, as a, as a, as a present, a copy of the, the draft that he uh, prepared saying that, you know, that the United States de facto recognizes, and it says there, the Jewish state, because they didn't know what was the name. And then he struck it out and wrote and Israel. Then the, right. And um, um, what's his name? Clifford Clark, Clark, 
Clark Clifford. Clark Clifford, Clifford he was, assistant. was his yes. assistant, came in just before and said, listen, they decided to call it Israel. So the Jewish state is Israel, and this is what I say to all those detractors, the Palestinians who say Israel is not the Jewish state. It is the Jewish state. And on this uh, paper, uh, on the right side, on the right, uh, you know, hand side corner, there's 9-11. 9-11 was 4 p.m. 11 in the afternoon where uh, when uh, Ben-Gurion finished his, his declaration speech. And, and 9-11 was, later. Was, was New York time, you know, in the, you know, the seven hours difference, 11 minutes after, and, and I... And, and but I you know that uh, this is actually relevant to our current discussion because um, the late, maybe not lamented, uh, uh, um, Saeb Arikat, the chief propagandist and, and negotiator, Bad mistake. Don't ever appoint yes. the same man to the two positions. Right. But the chief pro uh, propaganda master for uh, the Palestinian Authority used to say that Truman did not want to recognize the Jewish state. He struck <laughs> out Jewish state and wrote this. Right. <laughs> but you, you have the, the right version, and his was an it, attempt to exactly. manipulate the same uh, incident as if the Americans never really wanted to recognize. Yeah. And, and he actually, uh, on this question, of recognizing Israel as the legitimate expression of the Jewish people's right to self-determination. He uh, advised Abu Mazen, uh, his boss, to break off the American negotiating effort in, back in, in 2014, nine, in 10 years ago. Right, and then it has right, never been, right. nearly, uh, uh, almost exactly 10 years ago. Right. And, uh, and they ne he never came back to uh, President right. Obama with right. a, a counter offer or anything. It right. just, and, and, and this is, the most profound mistake that our Palestinian cousins are making. Absolutely. That they, they try to uh, um, act as if the Jews are not a people and Israel is not the uh, embodiment right. of the right of right. this people to self-determination. Right. No, no, it's, I know it's and this is ultimately what this yeah. present war also you know, that he, is all about. He also claims, you know, he realizes, you know, we have been here for like 4,000 years from Abraham time. He says, no, we were before you because we were the Canaanites. Mm -hmm. So once I asked him, okay, you say you're from the Canaanites. Do you have any documentation? Just show us some, you know, we can track back our history with documentation, with archaeological artifacts. Everything is pretty much recorded. Can you show me anything? Uh, can you have any uh, Canaanite leader that spoke Arabic or was he Palestinian? Was there any Palestinian king in the last uh, 4,000 <laughs> years? Nothing. You know, they just come out. It's so easy for them to lie. It well, is just ridiculous, and it's a, it's, it's, this is the culture here of lies. And uh, ultimately, it harms their own prospects. I think so. I think so. Yes, Except the, the they're tragedy still that's now unfolding is entirely uh, the result of, of this refusal to accept yeah. uh, the, the presence of Israel. Yeah. And uh, in this respect, I think, uh, despite all the reverses of the last few weeks, um, the uh, Israeli society rallied, the Israeli military rallied, uh, the results on the ground are very different from what they, uh, what Hamas and the perpetrators of, uh, of their atrocities imagined. And uh, even in the north where we both try, you know, are playing a, a game of very measured uh, actions and counteractions. Still the, under the threshold of all-out uh, 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 war. Yeah. It's not even uh, mid-intensity. It's just below the level of mid-intensity conflict. Mm -hmm. But they are, they are suffering serious losses indicating uh, um, capabilities, intelligence and, and uh, uh, precision-guided mm -hmm. capabilities. Of, of the of the IDF, and so uh, when you look at this aspect of the situation we're in, um, we have things that we can be positive about or optimistic about, but then there are complicated the complications, the political and mm -hmm. uh, complications. Right. And the, uh, but Iran, you hit it on the head when you uh, invoked uh, 2014 when John Kerry and under Obama, John Kerry was the Secretary of State under President Obama, tried to bring about all-time peace and uh, and people do not understand. They blame Israel. Netanyahu was uh, willing to go uh, a real to a far-reaching uh, distance with uh, Abu Mazen. His only uh, demand was 
that the Palestinians will uh, recognize Israel as a Jewish state. And that's broke down the negotiations. And this is really shows what is the, the core True. of the conflict. I was there. Yeah. You were so there. Were you. Exactly. You were there. You remember exactly. what, what and, and And you can uh, uh, actually um, extend a straight, direct line from that refusal to recognize Israel's uh, inherent rights here to what happened on the 7th of October. True enough. And, and here we are, almost six months uh, later, and I thought maybe, Iran, we will start by, um, how do you read the situation six months after the 7th of October in relations to um, our southern border and Gaza, and also how it will affect the north with, as we mentioned, this uh, tit for tat uh, going on with Hezbollah? Well, in the, in the south, the IDF proved uh, capable of reducing Hamas to a, uh, let's say, a remnant of its original force. But that remnant is still there. Um, but it metastasized into kind of guerrilla squads. I mean, no yeah, more battalions, uh, but, maybe, but except also, Rafa? Uh, not as effective as they would hope to be. <clears throat> um, I, I, I remember the, the numbers that were thrown around uh, at the time of the ground incursion. Uh, our American friends thought we would be suffering uh, 20 uh, lo- uh, casualties a day and uh, and that we will not be able to uh, sustain this level of, of attrition and they will not be effectively uh, able to take uh, control. Uh, this is not what happened. This is also the basis for the idea of confidence that if uh, and when conditions allow, they can do the same in the last remaining area, namely in, in the Rafah uh, salient. Uh, but that is conditional upon uh, a, a, a major effort to relocate the refugee population mm-hmm. from that area uh, elsewhere, uh, back back north to some extent at least. Or maybe Israeli westward country. towards this Moasis towards... So uh, the Moasis, it's north of Rafah, along the coast, or even... Along the and, coast. And, and yeah. maybe, maybe under strict Israeli controls, uh, some trickle of return to the... Uh, northern part of Gaza right. can also begin. After all, there are hundreds of thousands of people still living there amidst the ruins. And uh, um, the where, where I see an, in, an in, in, important indication is in the number of uh, Hamas and Palestinian Islamic Jihad um, men, uh, men in arms who surrender. Um, there was a legend uh, that was uh, perpetuated by, particularly by Hezbollah in, in, the, in the war of uh, 2006, for example. The, day, uh, the jihadists, the, uh, those who fight with an Islamist uh, interpretation uh, of, of, of their religion, uh, an, ideologic, uh, an ideology rooted in uh, a version or perversion of Islam, they would fight to the death. And, this, and, and the Hamas also built uh, their legend around that this. They want to go down as shahids. Yes, in the midst yeah. of the yeah. shahada of the Where Mukawama. 72 virgins will be waiting for them in heaven, right? In the Islamic and, heaven. And that therefore they love death, while us Jews fear death and, and cling to life. Well, I'm proud we cling to life and we celebrate life and we do not celebrate death, but uh, our young people are willing to sacrifice. And it turns out that many of their men are not. Mm-hmm. And that's an important indication. In the current uh, un- ongoing operation in, uh, in the Shifa Hospital, where they re- try to recreate a, a co- command and control center and uh, an operational base, uh, in areas that Israel uh, b- cleared and then left, and then they re- tried to return, and they were caught in an Israeli uh, um, lightning raid that surrounded the hospital, and now the fighting uh, in, in that compound is quite heavy. But hundreds, literally hundreds, uh, came out in surrender. So that's an important indication that mm-hmm. they are not quite the legendary challenge that they uh, assumed they would be able to be. But, also, I would say, Iran, and you know it from a military perspective, they are not as formidable military force. We see that on a one-to-one combat, I mean, they were always head, I mean, it, 
the, the idf well, always had the upper hand with them he, uh, well except of course on the, because we were caught uh, by a massive surprise and flat footed on the yes. 7th of october which was well, you know this is the cowardness you know who did they fight on the 7th you know they celebrate this victory they fought against babies and old people civilians who were in their bed this is when they you know victory but when the idf regrouped they re, you know repelled them quite uh, successfully True enough, and and again, quite a number of were, ca- were captured and and, yeah, and they're course. still. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Now the truth is that while, and frankly, we here in Israel, still live the seventh of October day after day for the last six months. It yeah. is as if this is the 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 fixed day in the calendar. Every day is the seventh of. You open the news, and while there's some current uh, items, there's almost always. Uh, some recollection, some story, some reference to what happened right. on that day. Right. We, we, for us, it's still where we are. Yeah. Much of the rest of the world, unfortunately, from our perspective, has moved on and now is completely focused on uh, on, on the current uh, situation in Gaza, uh, Gaza, forgetting altogether what led to the present. Uh, situation there, which I, yeah. I'm not, I, I will not deny, is, is it's not a humanitarian catastrophe yet, but it is a humanitarian crisis requiring uh, uh, urgent action, sophisticated action on our part, on the part of the international community, the regional players. All of this is, uh, I think, it's a legitimate expectation that we will do what is necessary to uh, prevent famine. Uh, to prevent starvation, to to ensure that uh, basic humanitarian needs do go in in an orderly fashion. At the same time, also that they are not uh, hijacked or, or robbed in broad daylight uh, by Hamas uh, marauders. So uh, uh, the world attention has shifted elsewhere, and we saw this with uh, secure, UN Security Council Resolution 2728 which focused on on the question of the ceasefire and humanitarian needs right, right. and um, kind of mentioned the issue of the hostages but did not uh, outline them. How can they? I mean, they have no leverage on Hamas. Um, did not outline any uh, mechanism for their release and, uh, and was uh, quite short on the explanations as to why this all happened in the first place. And that was a, a disappointment. Uh, it was a disappointment. But I just want to just reflect, not to justify, but the American position was, and they related to, to Jerusalem, that they reserve their veto power to life and death situations when it's really critical and that they cannot just use it, you know, um, too much because then uh, they, it isolates them and uh, it doesn't look uh, good vis-a-vis their uh, different allies around the world. So here they thought that this resolution was, you know, not the, the most, um, let's say, critical or endangering Israel. Well, it's clearly chapter six. It's, um, yes. It's, and, it, uh, it, it's still, at this stage, at least, uh, there are no attempts to give it and teeth, the Americans, and the yes. Americans will probably uh, uh, remain committed to preventing this from happening. Yes, and they did mention it publicly that this resolution is not binding. That means that uh, it's it, not uh, something that... Uh, it, uh, it outlines a set of expectations. Yeah. Perhaps Israel would have been wiser to say, well, for the next two days, we will uh, respect it. Study. But if the hostages are not out right, 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 right. within 48 hours, right. we feel uh, obliged and, and entitled to, to carry on uh, our military pressure until Hamas gets it, that uh, their only way uh, to, to right. relieve that effort, that pressure, is to uh, come to the table uh, right. and, 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 and release the hostages. And on the other hand, Hamas embraced this resolution. Well, which they, is quite they, ridiculous. They, they, they did not respect it. Of course they don't. They not. did not obey. Of course it, they do not. But they, they uh, played it. They and the Iranians played it as a, as yeah. a demonstration that it is Israel, uh, which is now a isolated. very wily game by uh, Indeed Ham- it is. Hamas and the, the Iranians. And uh, I think that the game here should be, from a broader perspective, to isolate Iran and the extremists. They are trying to do the, the same to us. And here, unfortunately, uh, the U.S. was not firm enough. 
No. And, and it seems like the perception is that we are isolated, although we are not, because, you know, we still have a great uh, deal of uh, decent people around the world that uh, support Israel. Um, one of the uh, delicate questions was from the beginning, how do we handle the Gattaris? Um, because uh, they host Hamas and uh, sustained it. Uh, we know that their money went to nefarious purposes over, over the years. Uh, but at the same time, uh, um, they are now uh, leaking a story as if they, they offered to throw Hamas out. And it was the American administration who told them, hold your hand, we may need them uh, at your elbow because uh, of the negotiations for the hostages. Now that Hamas has essentially uh, said no to the very far-reaching proposals that the Americans worked out uh, with, uh, between Israel and, and, and the uh, Arab uh, players involved and indirectly with Hamas, and they said no, uh, I think it's a moment in time in which pressure on Qatar to be much more um, assertive in telling Hamas uh, that you know they, they, they need to do sure. uh, what the international, what the world expects them to do. And you believe Iran, if uh, that's the time Qatar, for this to happen. Qatari government uh, threatens uh, Hamas leaders who enjoy the five stars hotel of Doha in Qatar, if they tell them if you don't reach out an agreement, you're going to be expelled, you and your families. That would be an effective tool to persuade them to bring about an agreement, and they would be also able to put enough pressure on Sinwar, who is in the tunnel somewhere in Gaza, to, to acquiesce. The first half, for sure. The second, to some extent, still uncertain, because Sinwar now has his own long game, uh, and, and he has only one goal in mind, which is to survive. The losses in, uh, of Hamas, the suffering of the population. He couldn't care less. He couldn't care less. Uh, as long as this ends uh, with him still in Gaza uh, with an element of, um, with a military element capable of retaking control, uh, then he, ha he will have won the war. And this is why it's, it is absolutely necessary Although to if, make sure this doesn't happen. Yeah. If, lo if we look with a critical eye, objectively, Hamas did not achieve any of its goals. They really wanted to uh, wreak havoc in Israel, not only on the southern border, but all the way up, maybe to... Um, maybe to Tel Aviv. Maybe but, even to Tel Aviv. But uh, we have to be aware of the fact that for the time being, um, tens of thousands, upwards of 100,000 Israelis are still uprooted from their homes. Exactly. It's not right. that right. hasn't happened since 48, and right. even in 48, this was a relatively limited phenomenon. Now, a whole two regions of the country mm -hmm. have mm -hmm. been largely denuded but of their population. But from a strategic point of view, if he thought that a, he could actually uh, bring about a circle of fire around Israel to merge the fronts, as we say, to have a Hezbollah invasion, to have the um, militias Afro, from Syria, militias from Syria and, of course, the, and the um, um, Israeli Arabs joining Israeli in Arabs and Palestinians from Judea West and Samaria, West. this did not happen. Also, no. Jerusalem is remarkably exactly. quiet. And, um, and? I should hope it stays that way, but... Uh, and also he wanted to bring about the collapse of the Abraham Accords. None of that happened. True enough. Um, well, Sudan was going uh, uh, its own way before October 7. Yeah. It was going to hell, and it has become a hellish place. But uh, Morocco, Bahrain, the Emiratis, and as we use, usually say, under the table, others, uh, continue to not only sustain a relationship, they understand that whatever happens at the UN, whatever language they have to throw around uh, in public, their long-term interest is utterly focused on the destruction of Hamas, without which there is right. no future for this region. Absolutely. And um, as we are today, I guess... Uh 
when we you know try to sum sum it up in the the, the, the situation in the in Gaza, we're still waiting, hopefully, for the uh, hostages to come back home. And for that, Israel would be willing to cease fire for at least six uh, weeks. Of course, we cannot uh, finish the job without Rafa, and Rafa can, should be done one way or another. I would say, and I think the Israelis would agree, that uh, something that can actually prevent a ground operation in Rafa would be if Hamas, the four battalions in Rafa, would unconditionally surrender, lay, uh, lay down their arms. We will allow them a free passage out, safe way out, just like we did to Arafat in 1982. To, in Lebanon, yes. And to, in Lebanon. So, uh, but without that, we have to do what we need to do. And uh, we. The same goes for Lebanon. We and the same be, goes for Lebanon. Israel and is we will willing. Finish Lebanon, yeah. Israel is willing, uh, quite clearly, to contemplate a uh, diplomatic solution. It would involve the Hezbollah withdrawal north of the Litani River, the, yeah. the real implementation, not the uh, uh, very sorry s spectacle we saw until now, uh, of uh, UN Security Council Resolution 1701 from right. 2006, right. the Lebanese government uh, actually functioning as a government, all kinds of things that uh, you know belong to uh, a, an optimistic wish list. But uh, if this can be done, uh, we can avoid the war. Otherwise, uh, once the situation in Gaza is resolved sufficiently for the next stage to unfold, and that requires a whole different discussion, uh, then Israel will have uh, by necessity to turn north and, and change realities on the ground in Lebanon. By far, this is uh, the epitome of uh, Casus Belli, uh, a cause for war, a legitimate cause of war out of self-defense, according to all articles of the United Nations Charter, if the, again, if 1701 UN resolution is not uh, being abided by Hezbollah, we'll have to uh, really to, to uh, actually have a ground uh, operation in, uh, in Lebanon. And I believe also the Americans will, although they do not like it and they would like to see a, uh, a political solution, but um, Israel has done more than enough to try and, and, and reach a, uh, a, a solu political solution. But if not, as you say, we'll have to wait and see. But our time is up, Iran. So I want to thank again all our viewers around the globe for watching Middle East Review of TV7 coming out of Jerusalem.